Jam family, uh, this is Pastor Johnny. Uh, we've been studying the attributes of God this month, and I'm so thankful that that our congregation have the opportunity to learn uh, who God is, because it is very necessary to know who He is. Uh, so I pray that all of our congregation learn a lot from these sessions. Um, you have three more, s- three more attributes to learn, uh, including today. Uh, And I'm going to talk about one of them today. Uh, The justice of God. The justice of God. What is justice? When I think of the word justice, a movie comes to my mind. Justice League, uh, one of DC movies. In the movie, there there appear many different heroes. Like Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman. They fight against bad guys, right, who try to conquer the world. And they always win because they are so powerful. Uh, Why is the name of the movie Justice League? It's because the heroes fight against unjust people to keep justice. In that sense, we can say that the word justice is very related to a concept of right and wrong and good and evil. And a dictionary defines the word as the maintenance or administration of what is just. Another dictionary says it is the quality of being just, impartial, or fair. Then how do we know that God is just? Just as we've learned other attributes from the Bible, uh, we are going to learn the justice of God from the Bible. Today's passage is the book of Proverbs, chapter 21, verse 15. Proverbs 21, verse 15. Let's read it together. When justice is done, it is a joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. Amen. This is the word of God. Let's pray together as we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for giving us a new day. Lord, this time we are going to learn who you are, especially the justice. Help us to understand well and also uh, open our hearts and renew our our, our mindset and worldviews so that we can worship you more and more in our daily moment, Lord. Thank you. Love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, the Bible speaks of many different concepts and definitions of God's justice. But today I want to mention three key things of God's justice. Number one, perfection of God's justice. And number two, judgment of God's justice. And number three, grace in God's justice. So first, the Bible says God's justice is perfect. Deuteronomy 32, 4 says, The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. God's justice, God's justice is always right and perfect. And it is so important because the justice of the world is not always perfect. One of the most popular philosophers in the world, whose name is Michael Sandel, uh, he said in his book that justice in the world is defined by three things. Number one, welfare and freedom and virtue. According to his logic, justice varies from person to person because each person chooses to pursue his or her own welfare, freedom, and virtue. That is the justice of the world. It changes a lot. And many people think differently. There is no one absolute justice in the world since we think differently. However, our God, who is always perfect, right, holy, unchanging, He has a clear standard of justice since He has the highest authority over the entire world. And He is the only God. So we can say that he himself is the standard of justice. His justice is perfect. 
That is the first thing of our lesson today. His judgment is always perfect. The second thing is judgment of his justice. Today's verse, Proverbs 21, 51, Proverbs 21, 15, it says, God just, God's justice is tattered to evildoers. What does it mean? It means that God brings judgment to punish evildoers because he is holy and just. As the heroes in the movie, they fight against bad guys. Our holy God, with his perfect justice, punishes to those who are sinful. Because of his, because of his attributes we learned, holiness, wrath, and justice, he must bring judgment to the world. And unfortunately, the Bible clearly says that no one is righteous before the presence of God, which means all people are sinful and deserve to be punished by His justice. And the wages of sin is eternal death, according to the Word. There is judgment of God's justice, and all people must take that judgment because all people are sinful, including you, including you and I. That's the second thing of today's lesson. And what about the third thing? It is grace in His justice. There's a good news, right? Our God did not forsake us. God sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to wash away our sins. Many people ask why Jesus must die on the cross. Die on the cross. He died on the cross because our problem regarding God's justice had to be solved. At his death, at the death of Jesus Christ, he took the cup of God's righteous, God's judgment that we deserve to take. He died to justify us and to dress us in righteous clothes. He took the judgment of God's justice. And the Bible says, whoever believes in him, whoever believes in him has his righteousness. Jesus' is righteousness. In Christ Jesus, our Savior, we no longer take God's judgment of eternal death. It is the good news, the gospel. So as we see the ju God, his, his justice, God's justice and judgment in the Bible, we have no choice but to rely on our Savior, Jesus. To meditate on His gracious salvation and to praise Him forevermore. So today's verse, Proverbs 21, 15, it says, When justice is done, it is a joy to the righteous. God's justice is a joy to the righteous who is in Christ Jesus. There is grace in God's justice. So we've learned the three things about God's justice today. Perfection of His justice and judgment and grace in his judgment. Now, I want to share two applications uh, with today's, today's lesson. Uh, number one, praise the Lord. Why? Because Jesus saved us from the judgment of God's justice, we have to praise the Lord. We often forget how precious our salvation is. But as Christians, we always need to remember the justice of God. God is just. Then, after that, we, are, we, are, we need to think about the judgment of His justice. And then we see Christ, who is the only hope. He, I mean our God, must punish us, for He is perfect, holy, and justice. But He did not. Because he loved us so much. So he, sent, so he sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ. How thankful it is. So we need to praise the Lord. And also we can praise him for he is in control with his perfect justice. His control, he's controlling the entire world 
with his justice. You know, there are many ambi ambiguities, ambiguities in the world, and there are so many things that, that we cannot expect, right? Including the COVID situation, there are so many ambiguity in the world we are facing as we're living in the world. But you know what? God's justice is always there. It has been there. Everywhere there is God's justice. When we think of it and we know it is perfect, always perfect, we give thanks to the Lord for He is good. It's written here, right? We give thanks to the Lord for He is good. For He is just. He is in control with His perfect justice. Trust Him. And number two, second application, is to pursue justice in the world. Number one was praise the Lord. Number two, pursue justice in the world. God wants us to pursue justice in the world. He wants us to seek justice at, your, at, at our workplace, family, and community. God did not just save us, but He justified us and made us the salt and the light in the world. All Christians who wear, wear the cloth of righteousness of Jesus, all believers, we all have responsibilities to pursue justice. And God works through our act of justice. Then what is it? What is justice? What is to, what is to pursue justice in the world? I'm not talking about the social justice here. I'm talking about biblical justice. So, the justice we need to pursue is to, to, to pursue justice biblically, what the Bible says to us. The book of Isaiah, chapter 117, it says, Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. And please the widow's cause. What the Bible says is, is to take care of those who are in need. That's justice. And to pray for those who suffer. And to say the right things without compromising with the worldly views or cultures. And to build up God's church by serving them, serving the church, loving the church, praying for the church. That's the justice, biblical justice God wants us to, to take. One of, fame, one, of the popular, uh, one of the popular theologians, um, Karl Barth, uh, he, he said a lot of things. Uh, but one of his best quotes is this. Uh, we must hold the Bible in one hand and the newspaper, newspaper in the other. I really like the quotes. So we have to take the Bible in one hand. We need to trust God and we have to act as a Christians, but also we have to we have to hold the newspaper newspaper because we are living in this world and God gave us a lot of responsibilities and one of them is to pursue justice. So today we learned three things about the justice, perfection of his justice, judgment and grace in his just justice. And two applications, praise the Lord and pursue justice in the world. I hope you guys learn a lot today. And please meditate on it and apply to your lives. Uh, let me pray and let's finish. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for your word and thank you for the message. Lord, uh, thank you that uh, you are just, you are in control with your perfect justice. Uh, we trust you, Lord. And also, uh, uh, even though uh, we are not perfect, Lord, uh, you saved us from your just judgment, Lord. Thank you for sending your one and only Son, Jesus Christ. And help us to uh, truly joyful for our salvation. And help us to pursue justice, seek justice in the world as the light and the salt in the world. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.